here are five tips for running with osteoarthritis. Welcome or welcome back to Age Fit with Tess. My name is Tess, physiotherapist. A question I often hear as a physiotherapist by people who have osteoarthritis is can I run with osteoarthritis or can I run without causing further joint damage? Answering this question is not always a simple yes or no. So in this video, I'm going to share five key considerations or tips for those wishing to run with osteoarthritis. Make sure to join the Age Fit With Test Facebook group to get further support building fitness and strength. To book a consult or join the Fit With Arthritis program, head to www.agefitwithtest.com. Let's get started. If you are living with osteoarthritis and have the vision of being able to run, an important consideration is to start slowly. This is like the marathon mindset over the sprint mindset. Consider answering these questions to assist you in setting your running goal. When was the last time that you had run? During your last run, did you experience symptoms of osteoarthritis or was your last run prior to having osteoarthritis? How far or how long did you run for? And what other exercise have you been doing? So for example, Jane, a long time runner of five years, who's quite used to running five kilometers a few times a week, had her last run about a month ago following her diagnosis of osteoarthritis. On her last run, Jane did experience some pain, about three to four out of 10. She's also been doing some rehab and strength-based exercises a couple of times a week. So because Jane is a long time runner, she has recently run and she has been completing strength exercises to build up the muscles supporting her joints. A good initial goal for Jane might be to run one to two kilometers with pain around three to four out of 10 over the next four to six weeks or so. A different example might be Mary. Mary hasn't run in a long time, since before she was diagnosed with hip osteoarthritis around three to four years ago. She can't remember the last run she went on, but it was about one kilometer or so. She remembers being limited by pain and not really wanting to run again because of the concern that her running would worsen her osteoarthritis. Mary currently walks for exercise about one kilometer a few times a week, but she does not do any other exercise. Here it is likely to take Mary a considerable time longer than Jane to get back to running due to the time since Mary has run and due to having walking as her only exercise source. For Mary, the most important factor is gonna be building consistency over the first four to six weeks. A good goal for Mary might be to start with some strength training around twice a week for about 20 minutes, adding in some short distance jogging around 20 to 30 meters if she can tolerate it. Tip two is warm up with rehab based exercises. And the reason for this is to ensure the muscles that support your joints are activated and engaging prior to beginning to run. It may sound obvious, but oftentimes general warm up exercises for running like leg swings, high knees or light jogs do not specifically target the muscles we want to engage when we begin to run. For example, with a person with knee osteoarthritis, the primary muscle groups that are gonna support the joints during running are the hamstrings and quads. Therefore, some rehab-based warm-up exercise might be some quad activation for the quadriceps and hip bridges for the hamstrings. For a person with hip osteoarthritis, this might include some hip abductions and adductions along with some hip bridges. For routines including these exercises, make sure to check out the links in the cards. The third tip for running with osteoarthritis is building on our first and second tips, and that is to incorporate strength training exercises into your program. And typically, the strength training portion will be greater than the running portion of your program. For example, for a person without osteoarthritis, out of three training sessions, they might be doing two running sessions and one strength training session. For a person with osteoarthritis, this might be reversed into doing two strength training sessions and one running session a week. And the reason for this is because for those without osteoarthritis, typically the limiting factor on their running ability is their cardiovascular fitness. Whereas for somebody who does have osteoarthritis, typically the limiting factor is joint pain. This means that the focus for somebody who does have osteoarthritis is going to be to build up the strength in the muscles that support the joint to help reduce the pain when running. Whereas for somebody without osteoarthritis, their main focus is gonna to be to build up their cardiovascular fitness. Tip four is add contingency into your program. So let's say you have a goal of running one, one kilometer and you wanna increase your distance by running 100 meters more every week. Your program would be 10 weeks 
of 100 metre increases in running distance each week to build up to that one kilometre. But rather than aiming to complete this goal within the next 10 weeks time, add in contingency to the timeline. And these are weeks you allocate to rest, knowing that you will likely experience some flare ups of pain. In this case, you might aim to complete your goal of running one kilometre within 12 to 13 weeks, rather than 10 weeks time. And the reason to add in contingency into your program is to reduce that feeling of guilt or failure that often comes along with goal setting and exercise programs. One of the main reasons that I've found that people don't like to set goals is because of that feeling of guilt or failure for not being able to achieve them. And this is even more prevalent in those who have a chronic health condition like osteoarthritis because of the unpredictable nature of flare-ups of pain and symptoms which can interrupt progress. So if you don't set contingency into your program to allow for those weeks where you might be in pain, you're setting yourself up for failure. For this reason, adding contingency into your program is probably my top tip out of these five. Tip five is building on tip four and is not only setting, but distinguishing between a vision, goals and milestones. And in my experience, one of the reasons that people often say that they don't like to exercise or they don't want to put together a program is because maybe in the past they've tried to put together a program and tried to reach one of their goals, but they didn't quite get there. And one of the ways to help solve that problem for people is to distinguish between their vision, goals and milestones. For instance, a vision might be to run again like before having osteoarthritis. A goal might be to run one kilometer in 13 weeks and milestones might be to increase our running by 100 meters each week, excluding our contingency weeks. The differences here are subtle but important. The vision of running again like before having osteoarthritis is a great vision but it's not something specific that you could measure, meaning that your mind is going to play tricks on you and it's going to keep moving the goalposts as you try and accomplish this vision. The goal of running one kilometer in 13 weeks is a goal because it's specific and measurable, but this goal can be difficult to track each week, which can be demotivating. The milestones of running 100 kilometers each week helps us to have something to work toward each week. These small milestones in turn help us to complete our goal of running one, one kilometre in 13 weeks and in turn helps us to reach our overall vision of being able to run like we were before we had osteoarthritis. To reiterate, consideration one is to start slow, looking at where you currently sit in relation to your overall vision. Tip two is to complete rehab exercises as a warm up. Tip three is to complete strength training at a higher proportion to running sessions. Tip four is to add contingency weeks into your program. And tip five is to distinguish between your vision, goals, and milestone. And if you have osteoarthritis, joint pain, or chronic injury, and are unsure if you have the right exercise program put together, make sure to get the Are You On Track self-assessment to identify if you are meeting 10 key components of a successful exercise program. Head to www.agefitwithtest.com to get your copy. Make sure to subscribe and ring the bell for the next video. To continue to build strength and fitness in the meantime, watch these two videos right here. See you next time.